Wait, is this just gate? Chapter 434. Written by Pepper Antique. Yu Yu, Vickers groaned as he slowly swam back to consciousness. He was still in the room he'd arrived in. But he was on the other side now, though he didn't know that immediately. He was also lying on a folding cot that was about three sizes too small for his large size, and had an full bag hanging above him. He's awake. A white suited tech said as they saw him stir. Check vitals. Chief, are you okay? Do you remember where you are? They asked as they began checking his eyes with a penlight. Vickers batted the light away like he was swatting at a fly, and his arm ached in pain as he did. He grunted again as his entire body protested its own existence, pains and aches flaring across every inch of him. Oh God, tell me I'm back in Boston. He said as he struggled to clear his swimming vision. A, a few thousand miles off. The tech said with a nervous chuckle. But you're at least in the right universe again. Damn. Vickers replied sarcastically. I was hoping to go to one of the universes where the Yankees never existed. The other tech, the one checking his vitals, laughed in surprise. What happened? Vickers asked as the first tech injected something into his shoulder. We're not a hundred percent certain yet. The tech replied. Handheld showed a lot of vascular ruptures. You're still recovering from some of those. He held up his tablet and showed Vickers a scan of his own abdomen. Plus your stomach ruptured too, and violently. Jesus. Vickers said. And I lived? The two techs exchanged glances for just a second. For the most part. The second tech said as they massaged his leg. The sensation was odd and he looked down to see that his leg was shaved in a few spots. The tech seemed to be inspecting the shaved area. How bad? He asked as he leaned back again. The first tech nodded a bit. Pretty severe tack. He said. Straight up flatlined for a good 30 seconds. Zappa wasn't strong enough to get shit back in line so we had to use manual compressions just to keep things pumping. Not easy to do on you. Sorry for the extra work. Vickers said sarcastically. Don't be. The tech, who Vickers was starting to suspect was actually a doctor, or at least a nurse, said. You started chugging back to life pretty much on your own after a few minutes. And the fact that you're already conscious after what was only about, they checked the watch on their suit's wrist. A couple hours? They said with a shake of their heads. Shit's ridiculous. Then they leaned forward a bit. Besides. They showed us footage of the guy they sent back way before. Prep us, you know? They shook their head again. He got it way worse. Don't know how he lived. Then they leaned back and recommenced checking his vitals. The second of them tapped a button on their suit's wrist. Vickers had also seen the footage of the werewolf they'd forcibly sent back months before. The mess he'd made was impressive, and Vickers had also wondered how he'd recovered. Not a lot of things could outright kill a member of the folk. But the level of damage he'd sustained had been incredible. Patient is a stable I guess. The second tech said uncertainly. We're gonna transport him to the quarantine chamber. Quarantine? Vickers wondered. Standard precaution. The first one responded as they helped the other lift the cot up onto a rolling gurney frame with more than a little effort. You came from another universe you know? Yeah. He replied as he started to drift off into unconsciousness again. And the movie on the flight sucked. He said just before he passed out again. And as he did, he realized that nowadays he was acting like Choi. Now I'm the one bouncing from hospital bed to hospital bed. He thought. God damn it. He's alive. James said as he entered the conference room several stressful hours later. The others in the room seemed to relax at the announcement. Atrophar seemed the most relieved at the news, but James noticed how the two former muck marchers also seemed to release the tension they were carrying. Gorna just nodded and sat back on her haunches off to the side. What happened? Driscoll asked before anyone else could. They're not sure just yet. He admitted. He's still being given the once-over by the doctors, 
and they're gonna be performing some MRIs and CAT scans to make sure nothing's wrong inside. No pun intended, for once. The people from Earth all nodded understanding as they Petravians looked uncertain. Scientific devices for looking inside of someone. He explained. Kind of like the medical insight spell, but with actual printouts that other people can read. That got them nodding understanding too. They suspect that because he is, more Petaravian now, what with being a member of the folk, he nodded at the Elder and Atrophar as he said that. As well as being a high-level magic user. His baseline for magical infusion was much higher than that of the test subjects. He grunted in discomfort as he recalled the next part. They also think the food in his stomach may have um, detonated a bit. T detonated? Amina asked in surprise as everyone else present also squirmed at the concept. Like exploded? She shuddered as her hand unconsciously moved to her stomach. Petaravian food has magic in it too. At least compared to earth food, though that may be changing soon. James said with a shake of his head. Then he turned back to the two Lunar Council visitors. Obviously they're going to have to work out the rest of what happened. But for now they've advised that you guys fast for a day or so before you transit over. Whenever that occurs. They still intend to have us transit? Elder Lindar asked. Even after this? Next to him Atrophar was nodding along with the questions. They've left that up to your decision for now. James replied. Technically, the trip is survivable. At least for a folk anyways. They're kinda doubtful for the rest of us. He looked back down at the tablet with the AAR. The colonel had sent over. Though they do suggest waiting until after they figure out the fine details. He looked over at Marcos and Vilairi. Vilairi was busy writing down notes about what she was hearing as Marcos looked over the designs of the machine, and compared them to what they'd learned since the event. And whenever the mags here figure out how to hopefully prevent that from happening again. Or at least lessen the effect. Atrophar looked over at the elder she was tasked with protecting. I may be a member of the folk. Leendar said after a moment of consideration. But I am called an elder for a reason. I am not the young buck I once was. James bit his lips at the subtle joke. I believe it would be prudent to wait for now. Let some fine-tuning occur. Atrophar nodded understanding. They all knew that she wanted to see Vickers, and make sure that he was all right. But she was a professional with a job to do. That's what I was hoping you'd say. James replied. Command is suggesting at least a week. They plan on um, improving, the pressure room they've set up on the receiving end. Plus they want to add some layers of protection that they think might, help with the magic problem though it is just a theory as of right now. The truth was they were adding a layer of walling that was basically a glorified Faraday irradiation shield. He didn't have high hopes for that doing much. But he had to admit he didn't know the limitations of magical energy saturation either. Vel? Marcos? He called, snapping the two mags out of their whispering note comparisons. Any idea what happened on this end? Off to the side the king simply watched all of this with mute interest. It was interesting to him to see the way the young soldier had changed over the past two years. He was no longer the young, brash, and at times emotionally fragile, young man he'd been when he'd first come here. He hadn't even paused to consider that the king should be the one in charge of the conversation. One of his people, in fact one of his closest people, had gotten hurt and the officer in him had emerged and caused him to take charge of figuring out what was happening and how to move ahead. No nonsense allowed. King Farik approved wholeheartedly of that. It was just unfortunate about all the things that had to happen to cause that transformation. We believe. Marcos began. That the theory about the chief's body, and his magical nature, are the chief issues. He said in his slow way. Also we believe that the opening may have had some issue with the, erm amount, of what was sent through. What do you mean? Atrophar asked. Vickers is large. But no larger than most of the folk. Marcos nodded agreement. That is true. He admitted. But he is still significantly larger than anything that has been sent over via our opening. 
Additionally we believe that him sending his personal belongings over before he entered the opening may have caused some kind of issue. And the bandwidth interference you noticed on the laptop was one of the things that made us think that. V. Lyrie added. Then, like she usually did with Marcos, she took over the conversation. The bandwidth? Five asked. Like the Wi-Fi signal? V. Lyrie nodded. When he threw his bag through there was a signal drop. You said so yourself. She said with a nod at James. Then when he jumped through there was an even bigger one and the signal degraded massively. Okay. James said. What does that point to for you? V. Lyrie looked at some of the notes in front of her. We know that our machine isn't the most efficient machine when it comes to energy use. She admitted, causing the king's eyebrow to raise for a moment. We believe that fluctuation may have caused a temporary instability in the connection between our two worlds. Not a big one. But it doesn't have to be to cause damage to the things coming through it. And that tore up Sebastian like that. Atrafar asked. James looked at her in surprise. It was always weird just hearing Vicar's first name, much less his middle name. Especially in a professional setting like this. V. Lyrie shook her head. No I don't think it caused him any impressive damage. She said. At worst I think that would have simply caused him some mild pain and weakness for a bit. Like I had after the incident in the Druid Forest, but shorter lived. She thought for a moment. But it would have compounded any damage he might have sustained from this and what did the Earthers call it? She asked Marcos, who held up a sheet of paper for her to read. Magical decompression. She said. It likely threw his magical energy off balance. Couple that with Earth's minimal level of magic and it would only cause bigger problems. How do we prevent that? James asked. She shrugged. Well. We're already working on refining the power supply issues. They've been a problem since day one. She shook her head for a moment. Other than that. Either go alone or carry your luggage with you when you enter. But until we can stabilize the power we shouldn't do any multi-traveler openings. How come Earth didn't have that problem? The king asked curiously. James looked over at Werner, who'd stayed silent thus far. She tilted her head a bit and shrugged when she saw him looking at her. We have significantly more powerful energy sources. He said. And, not to be rude, but a lot more stable and long-lasting as well. Hum. The king grumbled as he considered that. He knew that Marcos and Vilairi had involved some of the recovered earth power sources into their device. And apparently doing so had vastly improved the reliability of the device. So he had to wonder at the power sources that Earth wouldn't send over with their troops. We'll perform some more tests. Marcos said. We've both got ideas to supply more energy. And we're still calculating the fluctuations. A week is a good time limit for the next trip. I think. James looked around at the others present. Then at the king. The king nodded. A week it is. He said to them all. In the meantime. Major Choi please send the chief our best wishes. James made a point of looking over at Atrafar. I think I know who to let do that. He said. I'm just glad the big guy is alive. Atrafar was glad that she had fur as she felt her cheeks flush from all the attention, especially that of the elder next to her.